Hello, Esky fans, and welcome to another Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. I'm Corey LaRanger. And I'm Meg Morrison. A little loud in the stadium, go figure. They're, they're redoing the seats. Did you know that? I'm still, <laughs> yeah, apparently. <laughs> yeah. I'm still so pumped up about that game on Saturday. Two wins, officially a streak. And is it just me, or does it feel that much better when it's Saskatchewan that you're beating? I agree. Yeah. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> You know why? Why? Because we hate the Riders. We do. <laughs> we love the Eskimos, and we love when the Eskies win against the Riders, especially because the stadium is so full of that Rider green, and it just doesn't match with the rest of the stadium. No. But a great performance by the entire Esky uh, offense. Kerry Joseph at the helm. Hugh Charles gets a nod as Offensive Player of the Week in the CFL. Not only him, but Grant Shaw on special teams. The defense was on its game as well. Interceptions, fumble recoveries, and block passes. Great game overall. Oh, see, you're pumped about it. I was pumped about it. And there was two more fans that were super pumped about it. And the weird thing here is they're from BC. Huge Eskimos fans. And up next into the core, we're going to see what their first ever game at, at Commonwealth Stadium was like. Hi, I'm Celeste and I am from Vancouver, British Columbia and I've been an Eskimo fan for as long as I can remember. It was a natural fit. I love the colors green and gold. I used to live in Edmonton and honestly, we have enough Halloween colors around here. Need to brighten up the city. No Eskimo. No Eskimo. No, 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 no. My son Trevor also cheers for the Edmonton Eskimos. I chose it for him. <laughs> No, my family does not cheer for uh, the Eskimos. Trevor and I are the only Edmonton Eskimo fans in British Columbia. We have family all over the province and we enjoy bantering them and smack talking them and just showing our pride in Edmonton Eskimos and the green and gold. And the moment that we're playing together, we're all over their Facebook, their Twitter, text messaging, we're in their face. We're, we're loud and proud. Why not cheer for the Lions? Honestly, why would I? You know, I am an Edmonton Eskimo fan to the core. However, I have not been to a game in Edmonton yet. I said to my dad and said to my husband, we gotta get to Edmonton. You know, we need, I need to see all green and gold in a stadium and have two little speckles of orange and black. I am super excited to be here. I've lived for this moment for like three years. I'm here, I'm with my son, he's four years old and we're at the very first Commonwealth game supporting our team, the Edmonton Eskimos. We're here to win. It is even way more than I imagined. The chemistry, the atmosphere, the green and gold, having my family with me, I just love this. I just can't wait to come back again. So yeah, no, beyond my expectation to be at Commonwealth and be at the Eskimo games, yeah. Well, he has been very, very supportive, but then again, he's in the second row from me, so I don't hear a lot of him, but he is so orange right now. I'm gonna be there October 19th when they come to Vancouver. We're gonna be this gold, green and gold, but you know what? We're gonna rock our colors. Well, we'll be looking to you, Celeste, to help the boys get the W in BC this weekend. Good luck and Godspeed. Now, as we mentioned earlier, it was an awesome game this weekend. So great that the Eskimos didn't allow one sack all game. We'll give the O-line the nod for that. But can they draw? Well, we'll find out next as uh, Simeon Rotier is in draw play this week. He hasn't been playing because of injury, but he'll be the O-line's representative in draw play. And uh, hopefully he can live up to all the hype because uh, he'll have a long way to go to make it to the top of the leaderboard. Because as it stands right now, Kerry Koch is at the top with nine points. Then you have Rod Williams and Hugh Charles with six. Weldon Brown is at five. Coach Cavis is at four. And in the basement, you have Rashad Genty and JC Sherrod at three. So let's see how Simeon does. Okay, this is draw play here on the Green and Gold Gridiron Show presented by Carl Hager Lemon Brace. Today's guest is? Simeon Rotier. All right, Simeon, you know how we play the game. I give you a card, you start writing on here, and these guys yell out answers. You're on the clock. Go, my friend. I can't see. You show the noise. There you go. He's slow. He's slow. Uh, 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 a good idea. Microphone. Thank you. Just leave, just leave him up there. Just go for it. Uh, and he knows what's going Perfect. Uh, uh, Directions. Uh, basketball. I can't basketball. 
Baseball. Baseball. Ah. Knicks. Yeah, Knicks. Roller coaster. Oh what was that? Next one. Yo, yo. Oh, yo, yo, yo. Uh, Nostril. Somebody's <laughs> nose hair. Hey, dude. Hear her. We have not heard the answer. Uh, Amish well, shouted well, out before. Well, Time's well, up. Well, Big wheel. Big truck. Big wheel. Wheels, what it is. Time's up. Good job, guys. Hi, I'm Celeste and I'm from Vancouver and you are watching the Carl Haggard Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Go Eskies! Welcome back to the Carl Haggard Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Now, Corey, you're a bit of an actor, but do you <laughs> actually... What is this? What? Oh, nothing. My twitchy. Oh, sure. Do you actually, like, are you just one of those talking monkeys that does what they're told or are you capable of doing improv? <laughs> You read a script, right? <laughs> what are you doing right now? Who wrote these lines for you? <laughs> Whoever it is, I'm gonna get them. <laughs> Last week, speaking of improv, we saw Kerry follow a workshop with Rapid Fire Theater. Well, this week we get to see him perform on Citadel stage during Jimprov. You're the monkey. <laughs> this is Out of Bounds. I'm Kerry Coke, and we're at Rapid Fire Theater. Feeling pretty good. I thought uh, I didn't really know what to expect with this whole setting. Uh, it is a little less intimidating than I thought. I think the practice was probably a little more intimidating since it was a two-hour session and they kind of threw everything at me at once. We're taking one of the one of the, my favorites that we did from that day called the goalie. The next one I'll do is um, word at a time. I don't really I don't really like that one as much, but it uh, it should be interesting. A mere mortal to step on this stage and improvise with us. Someone who will challenge us, who will bring two new ideas to the stage. Someone with guts, with brawn. Someone with glory. I'll do it. What? I'll who do is it. That? Take the stage, mortal. <laughs> huh. oh. it's wide receiver Kerry Coke from the Edmonton Eskimos. The story will be about Pinocchio. Pinocchio. Perfect. The should have a drama and intrigue and suspense and wooden boys. <laughs> Two people um, uh, 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 were <laughs> creating a, a wooden boy and uh, one took a uh, the uh, the wood, and the glue, and the boy. It was really exciting. I'm still like, I'm still like, my heart's pounding, and I'm, uh, yeah, still a little, uh, I don't know. My, my blood's definitely moving fast. I'm uh, still a little anxious, but it was, uh, it was exciting. I was about to in, uh, embark upon a, a magical journey when I stumbled upon a grumpy old man and his name was Wisner. <laughs> the stage was nice. The lights were bright, so I couldn't really see how many people were there, but that was nice. Uh, it seemed like the crowd enjoyed it. They were laughing a good amount of time. I was being a clown up there, so it was good. I climbed upon a, a tower to a look out upon the lands. <laughs> a real boy. From then on, I was a little boy with still wooden arms, but <laughs> my heart was real. <laughs> this will be the story of the dentist. 
Well, you see here, we got some things wrong, boy. Down here in Louisiana, we don't like to work on you, but with the big tool. Oh, that's a really big drill. Oh my God, you're an amazing dentist. Maybe put that in my head that if I could do a Louisiana accent, mm -hmm. that I was gonna try to incorporate it in there. And uh, yeah, I just, I ran with it. I'm going places. I don't need anything holding me back here. I'm going big places. Yeah, like where? Where are you going to go? I'm going to go see the big cities. I'm going to see a lot of people. Which, help them. which big cities? Name them. Austin. Austin. Monroe. Monroe. Edmonton. No way. Yeah, you're a little more, you're definitely prepared when a football game you know, happens. Um, you've done your study and your research and your plays are all out there and you know what's going to happen. Um, they may throw different defenses at you, but you at least have an answer for it. And this, this improv, it's like there's no prep for it. You just kind of need to get your sleep the night before and just be kind of alert and ready and just kind of quick. Tell us a little bit about your innovative tool. <laughs> well, my daddy was an alligator farmer. And he used these big ropes with lots of tools and chains. Sounds scary. So I took these tools he, he showed me and I created the greatest dentist tools ever to help with the root canal. Root canals are now painless. Painless root canals. They happen in 30 seconds. Or less. <laughs> and you get your money back guaranteed. <laughs> Great job by Carrie, and thanks to the Rapid Fire Theater for playing along, and maybe next time we'll see if we can get Carrie to do the Louisiana Dentist Touchdown Celebration. Now I'm here with Dwayne Vano, and uh, first off, I have to ask you about this little thing here. Are you now a member of the Ozone? No, I'm, I'm not a member of the Ozone, but we had our post-game uh, Oktoberfest Cabaret last week, and I saw a bunch of the guys having some fun in there, and they, they said, they pinned me, and they said, will you wear that the next time you do an interview? I said, I will do it. So that's why I've got it on today. A shout, man of your shout, word. Shout out to Section O. <laughs> there we go. Okay, first I want to talk about the women's dinner that happened on Monday night. It was a huge success, and you guys raised the most money that you've ever raised, right? Yeah, we, um, the, the total last, uh, this week was 73, almost $74,000, and it made the grand total of the five-year dinner over two hundred seventy thousand dollars. And we're not done yet. Wow. Um, we have uh, we did a lot of initiatives in the last game, and we also have a bunch of um, game-worn um, equipment that's coming back after the BC game that we're then going to auction off online to go raise some more money for towards cancer. And then, like last year, we're going to have our Movember campaign as well. And so last year we did over $100,000 with everything that we did. And right now we're on track to beat our numbers from last year. So we're very happy about that. Oh, that's awesome. So what are the details for when are these auction items going up? When are they coming down? And uh, the website where you can go to? So I, I would check the website next week. Um, w once we get through the, the BC game, because it's a pink game again this weekend in BC. So the players still have to wear their same uh, shoes and gloves and everything. Once that gets back, we get some, some uh, equipment back from them. And then that's when we start to build the auction. So it'll take about a week after that, but it'll be online and last year we kept it up for a couple of weeks. Awesome. Now we have another dinner that we can get ready for next week and it's the annual Eskimos dinner, right? Yes, it's the 48th annual dinner and um, we're really excited about this one because it's the 100th Grey Cup as we've talked about in previous shows and so because of this special year being the 100th, we decided to honour all of our 13 Grey Cup championships and and what, how are we going to honour them? We're going to do a, a bit of tributes to the, a lot of video footage and showing some old plays, etc. But we've also brought in a bunch of players from the past. That big are names. Big names uh, to represent all the eras. So Bill Smith, our former mayor who played in the 50s, is going to represent the 50s. We're bringing Warren Moon in and Tom Wilkie is going to be here for representing the five in a row era. We also have um, that 87-93 era. We have Sean Fleming and Damon Allen coming in. 
And we also, for the our last era, which is 0305, is Ed Hervey and, and Shannon Garrett. So we have an action-packed panel. There's going to be nine, eight or nine players on there telling us stories about all those great cup championships. Very cool. And tables still available that you can get your seat in there? Yeah, you'd have you'd have to move very quickly. Um, but yeah, there's still room available. And the the, the dinner usually has about 800 to 1,000 people at it. It's a great night. Uh, it's a, a, lots of celebration and a, a chance to meet all the players. Every single current M an Eskimo will be there and if you want you can get an Eskimo at your table as well so it's just an all-around good time. Awesome and how do you get tickets? Go to 448 Esks or um, uh, sorry 448 Esks our phone number or our s.com and there's information on there or just call the office. Wonderful well thank you very much thank and uh, I like that you're now a proud member of the Ozone <laughs> and we'll be back with more of the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show after this. This is Peter, that's Jay, I'm Matt, we're Section O, and you're watching the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show on Shaw TV. Welcome back to the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. I am freezing out here. You're a sissy with your gloves on. You should be wearing some gloves with some mittens. Yeah, eh? you're in my bad books, and the other person in my bad books is Burke Dales, because as he says, it's always warmer in the coffin corner where he gets to do it inside. I don't even understand. He's shooting inside, and this week he hooks up a hot tub and margaritas? Who is Burke's agent? I gotta talk to this person. I need a drink right now. Uh, here's the coffin corner. You're now back in the coffin corner with Burke Dales. Uh, today we've got a special day. We've got a treat of a guest here with us. Um, we're with Axon, we're Maxon in the hot tub today, having a great old time. Darcy Brown, again, a real treat. Darcy, you room with Ryan King in St. Mary's in college out in Halifax. What's the most memorable moment that you have of Ryan King? Uh, I also room with his brother, Andrew King, and I'll just say that of the three King brothers, there's always a story to tell, but none that are good enough to tell or appropriate to tell on the internet. Uh, if you were an animal, which animal would you choose to be and why? Maybe a liger. It's like a mix between a lion and a tiger. Have you seen that thing? It's like 500 pounds. It's an outstanding answer. Okay, if there was a movie made of Darcy Brown's life, who would play the, uh, the star role of your movie? Um, maybe the girl from Precious. Can you say that again, please? Uh, the girl from Precious, if she's not available, uh, Denzel Washington. It's a great call, great actor. Uh, what are you gonna dress up this year for Halloween? Uh, maybe the girl from Precious. If that's not available, maybe Denzel Washington. <laughs> <laughs> What's your favorite music genre? Uh, I'm a big hip hop and rap fan. Born in the mean streets of Mississauga, Ontario. What up? What's your favorite uh, artist? Uh, probably Drake, hometown hero. Favorite song? Ooh, can't make me choose that. Um, maybe the motto. Have you got a few lyrics of the motto? Now she want a photo. You already know, though. You only live once. That's the motto. You can't really say that word. Now, obviously, the Coffin Corners uh, come a long way with ratings. I've got a lot of connections. I set you up on a date with Halle Berry. You have her over to your house one night. What do you cook for her? Ooh, uh, I don't know, maybe like a nice steak or something like that, but uh, I don't know, everyone's going vegan and vegetarian these days, so it probably wouldn't go over well and I'd probably blow it. Knock him out or buy him a beer, a little segment we do at the end of every Coffin Corner episode. Uh, George Cortez. I'm ju <laughs> just kidding. Uh, let's, go with, uh, let's go with a jumper from space the other day. Uh, I, I admire what he did. Uh, maybe I'd buy him a Red Bull plug. Um, but uh, I think it would make great TV that as he was coming down successfully, I ran in camera and knocked him out. I think that'd be great. <laughs> An absolute treat yet one again, once again in the coffin corner, Darcy Brown. Cheers. Thanks, Burke. As always, a great job. I don't know how you hooked that up, but uh, you got to let me in on your secrets, mate. <laughs> this week on Fundamentals, Coach Cavis is going to talk to us about canceling a purchase at the Gap. Are you sure about that? Yeah, he told me we were going to talk about gap cancellations. Do you think that he means that he's going to talk about how to defend against runs? Oh, it, that might make more sense. Yeah. yeah, I thought he was just talking about buyer's remorse. I'm Kavis Reed, head coach of the Edmonton Eskimos, and today we're going to look at run defense, more specifically gap cancellation. In order to understand gap cancellation in the run defensive scheme, we must first understand what the gaps are. 
In the defensive vernacular, we denote our gaps using letters and sometimes numbers. It's easy. If you can say ABC, one, two, three, you can understand this concept. This gentleman here always knelt over the ball and delivered the ball to the quarterback is called the center. The gaps immediately to the right or left of the center are called A gaps. The gaps to the side after the A gap is called the B gap. And I think if the progression is correct, the gap outside the tackle, if I remember my ABCs correct, is called the C gap. And any gap created after that is so denoted sequentially, D and E gaps. In the basic run concept for the defense, we have to account for every one of these gaps by placing a defender in those gaps. And here we're going to see that our defense does an absolutely wonderful job of placing a man in each of those gaps, which gives the running back nowhere to run and allows us to make the tackle. So if we see this in slow motion, we're going to see each of our defender attack a gap. Here, the A gap is closed. The linebacker, number 40 here, is responsible for the B gap. Number 97 is responsible for the C gap. All gaps are accounted for, and now when the running back goes to find daylight, as we will call it, or free gap, there is nowhere to go, only green awaits him. Good job by our defense of covering off every gap, forcing the running back to stutter, uh, stutter his feet, and the tackle is made with a minimal gain. And that's a basic study on the run defense or gap cancellation. The Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show will be back after this. Welcome back to the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. You know, Meg, I am still psyched about last Saturday. <laughs> I'm pumped. What a great way to spend an afternoon in Commonwealth Stadium, beating the riders, heckling them as they're crying their little tears into their pills in their cups. I love it. <laughs> That's awesome. And I don't know how much crying the cameras picked up, but they sure got a lot of air guitar in this week's Sounds of the Game. All your life, all your life as a player, no matter what level, all your life, you want moments like this. You want moments when it's in your hands and you decide, you decide the outcome all your life. You've dreamt about moments like this. I'm confident in this group that you're ready mentally, emotionally, and physically to seize the opportunity. We are in a moment right now, guys, a moment that will define this season. And you're ready. Your heart is ready. You're ready. Every play, tell yourself, it's my moment. It's my time. And guys, there goes that man again. Let's go play football. <laughs> Gotta protect your house, man. It's like your mom, your sister, and your daughter, man. Start this to finish, home, man. Baby. Start to finish. Let's put it together tonight, baby. Let's put it together. Oh. Bone on three. One, two, three. Oh. That's it, block snappers. Don't make plays, you know? There we go, there we go, 
Glory to God. That does it for another episode on the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show. Good job, Meg. No, I'm not doing that today. <laughs> Why? My hands are freezing. It'd be nice and soft no, on your you knuckles. No, you your stupid gloves. Whatever. <laughs> All right, be that way. Tune in next week, as always, Wednesday night, 7 p.m. on Shaw TV Channel 10, or catch us online, esks.com or shawtv.ca. And make sure to visit our social media pages. You have Instagram, you have YouTube, you have Facebook, and you can even tweet us at The Gridiron Show. Now, there are big games, and there are big games. And this weekend, it's one of the big games. <laughs> yeah. The Green and Gold are visiting the Orange and Black BC Place this Friday at 8 o'clock. And we know that uh, our To The Core fans, Celeste, will be there, unfortunately. Eskimo Empire won't be able, so you can catch all the action on the Voice of the Eskimos 6.30 Ched or check your Shaw HD listings. And uh, make sure to cheer loud even if you're in your living rooms because we need this win. Let's make it three in a row. Go Esks! <laughs> the Carl Hager Green and Gold Gridiron Show is brought to you by Carl Hager Lemon Brace. Custom designed braces and foot orthotics manufactured in Edmonton. Great job as always, Burke. I don't know how you ended up with uh, this position this week, but I'll find a way to get in the hot tub at some point. <laughs> Burke? <laughs> On Saturday. So great that the Eskimos didn't allow one sack all game. Was that a commercial break there between your lines? Fans had what kind of. <laughs> oh, come on! <laughs> <laughs> ah! <laughs> Corey does his job. Hi, so we have to redo it because Meg screwed up. Shut up, Corey. <laughs> You're a screw up. <laughs> 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 oh, do you need a white balance? <laughs>